Good morning everyone. I am Rahul Nanuhal, COO at Kureka.com and we are back with our weekly Instagram live session. Now the topic for today's Instagram live session is living with diabetes. Diabetes these days is a very you know hugely followed topic with a lot of people even the younger generation suffering from diabetes unfortunately. So how to treat diabetes, how to prevent diabetes, what are the questions and confusion surrounding what food to eat, what to do, what not to do. Uh, this all will be clarified today in today's session by a very well reputed doctor, Dr. Ebenezer Rajadurai, who is a senior consultant at prestigious Devadas Hospital. He is also the medical director at the Devadas Hospital. So he is going to join us in a few minutes from now and he is going to help us understand how we can live happily and in a healthier manner with diabetes. Now Cureka is your go-to platform for all your daily healthcare needs, whether it is for your babies, for your family members, working people, elderly people, Cureka has got doctors curated products for everyone. So the team of expert doctors led by Dr. Hema Satish and Dr. Satish Devdas have worked very hard through the years to develop this platform which has got products which are handpicked by their team. So today millions of Indians benefit from not having to you know worry about whether the products in front of them are good for them or not. They come on Kureka's platform and with no worry, with no tension, they know that the product in front of them is wonderful for their healthy living. Many patients or their relatives or their loved ones, they come on our platform and ask us a lot of questions around uh, how they can treat those diseases, how they can treat those concerns, what happens if they take a particular product, how to use it. Uh, they do this with the help of a free of cost WhatsApp platform. So you can also make use of it. You can also come to the Cureka platform. You will see a WhatsApp icon uh, in the bottom right side footer. Go click on that and you can connect with our care team experts who are available throughout the week for your service across the working hours and they will get in touch with the doctors and will provide you a consultation for free, no charges and no obligations. You don't need to buy the products from us if you do not want to at this time. All you need is to just put across your query to understand what is good for you or how to take a particular product, how to consume a particular product, what are the product recommendations for you how you can have a healthy living. So Dr. Ebenezer is going to join us now in just a few seconds and uh, we'll be discussing with him about multiple things. Uh, thank you Dr. Ebenezer, thank you for joining us. Oh, nice to be a part of the program. Uh, am I audible to you? Can you hear me? Yes, you are audible. Great, wonderful doctor. Wonderful. So Doctor, diabetes is a very common topic these days. Can you please let us know, you know, what are the symptoms of diabetes? How can we identify diabetes? So uh, diabetes uh, is a problem that uh, happens in our body when pancreas is not secreting insulin adequately or when we have something known as insulin resistance. Insulin is uh, secreted at the correct level but uh, our cells are unable to use it well. So the usual symptoms that we have, uh, especially when the sugars are high, are an increased thirst, 
you'll feel a lot uh, very tired uh, you'll feel very hungry uh, along with that uh, there will be increased uh, urination you will want to go to the toilet quite often especially in the night uh, a person might want to go two or three times a day so these are the symptoms of uh, diabetes especially when sugars are very high at an early stage the only symptom might be you will feel more tired than usual whatever work you used to do before uh, you might not be able to do well uh, so th that is the earliest symptom of diabetes right right understood so doctor typically what lifestyle changes does a person need to make uh, after he has been diagnosed with diabetes so ideally uh, two things one it's always good to maintain a good lifestyle even uh, hmm. if you are not a diabetic so that will actually prevent a person from getting diabetes or at least prolong the duration of a healthy life before you get an illness so uh, especially when you are starting to, uh, when you started uh, uh, to be diagnosed as diabetic the first and most important thing is, is you need to analyze uh, what is going wrong usually the most common thing is Uh, a stress filled life so a person might be working uh, uh, long hours in the uh, at office even at that time even in the office there will be in ac room for long hours there will be tra traveling by car there will be no physical activity so that is a commonest mistake and that is a commonest change that you can you can actually bring to control diabetes so walking at least uh, 30 minutes daily brisk walk so i, I would say Uh, at the speed of around uh, 4 kilometers per hour so if you walk for an hour you should walk around 4 kilometers a lot of apps are very helpful to gauge uh, the distance and the speed at which you are walking so in that mm. at least the, to start with 30 minutes walk per day second most important thing mm. is analyze your diet uh, ideally uh, stopping uh, eating outside and uh, concentrating on home food itself will make a lot of difference especially snacking outside uh food if you can prevent that uh, inclusive of a lot of vegetables in your diet especially what we would say is one third of carbohydrates that's if you're taking a, a, a tiffin box with uh, three uh, carriers so one carrier of rice with two carriers of vegetables for your lunch that makes a big difference in controlling your sugar so that is the earliest right. lifestyle change that you can make to bring your sugars under control right right and people who are sitting for long hours what advice you would have for them because they have a very sedentary lifestyle uh, especially it people who are sitting in front of computers so there are a lot of ways where we can actually during our work hours itself uh, include some form of exercise uh, one mm. if you can actually uh, travel to your work by cycle or uh, walk mm. keep it near by right. second avoiding elevators and uh, lifts using stairs yeah. if, if you yeah. were actually climbing four flights of stairs that itself uh, will be about 1500 to 2000 steps so yeah. the target is 10000 steps per day so if you if you climb uh, twice you are uh, getting about uh, 4000 steps within that actually correct so the next thing is when you having a break so you have a coffee break or a uh, evening a tea break so the best thing to do at that time is get we all want a samosa pakoda or a tea you know yes tea coffee is okay try to avoid sugar in that tea and coffee and in that time if you can get a 5 10 minute uh, uh, walk so you know walk inside your campus or walk inside your office or even walk in your corridor if you can do that that will give you 20 minutes of brisk walk for, for that day so these are uh, inclusive changes yes we are all busy we are uh, you know working 9 to 5 9 to 8 uh, the timing is an issue but then including yes. a healthy lifestyle within that would actually make a big difference right right and guys uh, those who are watching us if you have got any questions you want to ask dr ebenezer you can mention in the comment section below and we will try to take them uh, take them up during this session even let's say the session gets over and if you have still got some questions please do mention them as well uh, we will try to get back to the doctor and request him for answering those and we'll get back to you right so moving on doctor uh, the next question how often should we get our uh, blood sugar levels checked so ideally uh, two things there is something known as uh, primary prevention so anybody hmm. over 35 years of age at uh, our present uh, 
condition of health in our country. Anybody over 35 sure. years of age, would, it's best to get an annual health checkup done, which would include sugar, cholesterol, creatinine. Okay. Uh, anybody with a family history of heart problem, it's best to include an ECG and echo. After 35 mm. years of age, uh, if mm. it's normal, every three years one of sickness. After mm. 45, uh, even if you don't have a medical problem, best to get an annual health checkup done. Good. Uh, okay. If you are diagnosed as pre-diabetes, that is your HPA1C is between 5.7 to uh, 6.5, less than 6.5, or you are diabetic, your HPA1C is more than 6.5, it's ideal to get a three-monthly HPA1C checked. So HPA1C is an average sugar that gives a three-month average of how your sugar was. Uh, that will help us to not just for us as a personal goal to see how our lifestyle modification affected our sugars mm -hmm. but also uh, it will help the doctor to uh, if you are on medication to titrate the dose based on the HPA1C mm -hmm. level. So three months once that's a magic term. So ideally uh, if your diagnosis pre-diabetes or diabetes uh, with diabetes three months once you need to change. Right. Right doctor. Now doctor the we would like to request you for some tips for managing the blood sugar levels uh, throughout the day. So, if you are diagnosed as diabetes, so as I had mentioned before, the problem is that your body is unable to secrete enough insulin or even if it secretes enough insulin, there is something known as insulin resistance where your cells are unable to use the insulin. Insulin is like a key, you are at home. So you feel you're at home, but you don't have your home key, you can't get inside your home. So insulin is the key for the cell to use the glucose. So there are two ways of uh, tackling it and making sure your sugars are under control. One is to decrease the insulin resistance. So as I had mentioned, a walk every day, 30 minute walk will actually reduce your insulin resistance. So your cells are able to use the food that you take. So your glucose doesn't shoot up. The next important thing is actually uh, taking smaller meals so uh, instead of taking a heavy meal uh, for lunch and then a even heavier meal for dinner uh, you know splitting your meal into smaller portions will actually help uh, the insulin that is in the body to uh, metabolize it adequately so that the sugars don't shoot up immediately after the meal so and third important thing is actually to increase the fiber intake so when you take a lot of vegetables along with your rice or roti, uh, you know, in the night you take some food along with your uh, chapati or roti that you're taking, what it actually does is it reduces the glycemic index of the food. So your body is able to digest it well, but your sugars won't peak immediately. It will take a, it will go up very slowly so that your uh, body can, sugars are not extremely high. So these are ways to keep your sugars under yeah. control once you're diabetic. Uh, to keep your sugars under control throughout the day. Right, right. Thank you, Doctor. I think that's very useful. No, uh, a lot of people ask questions, Doctor. I mean, everyone has got fetish or some of their favorite foods that they want to have, and which might not be always good for your diabetic health also. But then, how often can they have their own favorite food, Doctor? It's always a joy to have uh, certain foods. Each of us have our own uh, favorite, uh, you know, foods like an ice cream or you want to have a jalebi. Uh, that is completely acceptable. In fact, depriving yourself of uh, your favorite delicacies uh, at least once a month will sort of lead, uh, lead to depression. Uh, but uh, the best way to go about it is you have to gauge. Like today, I'm going to have a, say, for example, I'm going to have a ladu. So uh, the calorie content of a ladu or a Good tomorrow, jangri is almost equal to my meal, uh, you know, or, or a healthy snack uh, snack that I'm going to take. So, if I'm going to take that snack, uh, uh, a laddu or a jalebi, so I'm going to what I'm going to do is today I'm not going to take the uh, evening snack, or today I'm going to cut down on my lunch. So, that is the best way of including your favorite snacks, maybe very rarely. It's not, I'm not saying it's a mm -hmm. day event monthly, uh, you know, uh, to uh, fortnightly once, you just want to have a snack or you're in a your uh, uh, family gathering, you just want to take something, that time you need to take that snack and cut down on the other carbohydrates. So, uh, you're going to cut down on your rice and take that extra ladu that you want to take. That is the best way of enjoying your food 
at the same time making sure your sugar is going to go up. Right, right. Thank you, Doctor. Now, Doctor, what are some of the strategies for preventing diabetes complications? So, what, what many studies have done. So, there's a study called Leukopedia trial, which is a famous trial that looked at diabetes complications. So, what are the complications? So, diabetes affects the eye. So, it causes retinopathy. So, it long term, it can affect your vision. So, we know a lot of people to go and undertake laser treatment because their eye has been affected with retinopathy. Diabetes affects the kidneys, so it's called nephropathy. So what it, what will happen is a lot of protein gets lost in the kidneys and over time the kidney can't, is not able to function and so might require dialysis at a later date. Diabetes slowly, you know, it's like a silent killer. It slowly goes and blocks the blood vessels of the heart and the brain and causes a stroke, a brain stroke or it can cause a heart attack. So these are the complications of diabetes. The other complication which might, might not be life-threatening but causes a lot of problems for patients is it can also affect the nerves. So once it affects the nerves, the patient has tingling sensation. Slowly they are unable to feel their feet and so uh, ulcers happen. So these are the complications of diabetes. So a lot of studies that looked at these complications found that if you keep your sugars, uh, your HbA1c, less than seven continuously so that is it shouldn't be like three months it's under control nine months it's out of control if you can forever like keep your sugars less than seven these complications do not happen. so that is the that is a very important point that anybody with diabetes should know so your target hba1c as long as it's less kept less than seven you're like a normal person a normal person does not develop a heart attack a normal person shouldn't develop a stroke or a kidney problem or a nerve problem. So the target is seven. So that seven is achieved by a combination of diet, exercise, and once your sugars are a little higher side, medication. So these three important things should achieve a target of seven and prevent complications. Understood, doctor. That's that's quite helpful, doctor. Thank you for that. And then. Uh, if a person is suffering from diabetes and he has got a wound in his hands or legs, I mean, how dangerous could it be and then what to do about it? So, as I had mentioned before, the one of the, the big problems of diabetes, these are the other problems are life-threatening, but one of the bigger problems of diabetes is peripheral neuropathy. So, what will happen is uh, the sugar goes and affects the peripheral nerves in the leg, especially the leg. So, and the patients are unable to feel their feet, so they their feet will be numb. Whereas a small stone or a thorn, once it pricks their leg, it will form a very big ulcer which doesn't heal very fast. And what it will do is it will affect mobility. Once you are unable to move, we find going to work and our daily activities, uh, activities or daily living to be done very difficult. So, the best uh, way to uh, treat and or to avoid is to have one obviously keep your sugars under a HPA once you have seven. Second, once you have this tingling sensation or numbness to always have something known as a microcellular rubber footwear. So they both inside home because even at home we can have small stones which can you know prick and then cause infection. So even inside home and outside home to have this soft rubber that's known as microcellular rubber footwear uh, which will prevent injuries to the leg and uh, especially if you're walking in a hot weather outside your home. So it's always best to wear a footwear. But once infection comes, ideally consult your doctor, immediately get it treated and uh, with appropriate course of antibiotics and preventive strategies to uh, prevent that infection. These are things uh, to uh, follow, especially for diabetics with a foot infection. And infection usually happens in uh, Mostly in uh, house, uh, you know, uh, homemakers or uh, women who wash their utensils, so they get uh, these uh, hand infections that can happen. So that doesn't heal fast when you're diabetic. When you're non-diabetic, it will go off in a day or two. But when you're diabetic, it doesn't heal fast. There'll, there'll be pus collection along with that. That needs to be drained quickly, especially if you're diabetic, uh, with an appropriate course of antibiotics and preventive strategies. So, for example, you're washing utensils. At home, you are going to you know, wash clothes and this is a problem because you are a diabetic, you need to wear gloves. So, so those are preventive hmm. strategies to uh, prevent right. this hand infection that might happen. 
right 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 thank you so much for you know explaining that doctor i'm sure it's quite helpful for people uh now doc- doctor we discussed and you mentioned about stress being uh, one of the critical factors which con- contributes to becoming diabetic uh, for a lot of population so how to manage stress effectively especially for, for people with diabetes uh the understanding of stress so what is stress so i mean your real stress is when somebody is you know crashing us and get agitated it's not just that the body can have a stress response in multiple things so most common if we really not in the mess this when you don't sleep adequately so when you sleep for less than 7 hours what happens is body is not, has not got an adequate rest so what will happen is the next day the whole day you will feel more stressed and we have seen that for diabetics so sugars were really well under control somehow they traveled or you know they were busy with something the night they didn't sleep they slept for 2 hours 3 hours the next day the sugars will be extremely high 300 400 mm-hmm. although they are taking the same medicines that they were taking before so that is one of the most common stressors that people have so adequate sleep at least 7 hours as you age 9 hours of sleep is mandatory and that is one of the most important causes of stress mm-hmm. the second most mm-hmm. important cause of stress is overthinking and you know work related stresses so that can be managed if you can you know uh, if you are able to compartmentalize your work and your life as such and the second most important thing is delegate your work so those are uh, you know work ethics that you can follow to uh, get your stress levels under control at home the third important uh, stress is infections that can happen so uh, diabetics may have, uh, for especially diabetics even a mild uh, uh, upper respiratory infection or cough or sputum will initiate a dramatic stress response in the body there are uh, cortisol adrenaline these are hormones which suddenly shoot up in their body and uh, can lead to something known as dka so in diabetics especially if you have fever or uh vomiting blue stools and uh, that's gastroenteritis or even a upper respiratory infection is not getting controlled within a day or two best to approach a physician and get it treated as fast as possible uh, that because more than a day or two that means that your body is not able to manage it it's getting stressed and that can lead to increased sugars and it's like a vicious cycle that increased sugar will actually increase the infection so get yourself treated as quickly as possible within uh, if the infection is not better by a day or two so these are the important causes of stress and the ways to manage stress for diabetes right doctor right now doctor if someone with diabetes and they plan to travel for long distances so what precautions do they, do they need to take to avoid uh, increasing the diabetes or sugar levels one of the most important problems that i see with my patients who travel is a lot of times they forget to take their medicines so yeah pass is the most uh, trouble for them because you don't take a medicine for a day or two the sugars will jump dramatically so you will be at a funk home function or somewhere you don't take medicines for two days once sugar starts to 300 or 400 you start developing complications so you might feel mm-hmm. uneasy in your chest or you might feel dizzy because sugar go up yeah dizziness giddiness because the brain the blood vessels to the brain are getting affected so those are symptoms that can happen so i would say while traveling the first important thing is make sure you pack your medicines for the duration of travel or plus minus two days the second problem that happens patients on insulin they find it uh, difficult to uh, take the insulin along with them or they don't know how to take it along with them so once you are on insulin the most important thing is uh, nowadays a lot of insulin can be preserved i mean kept outside even up to 30 degrees room temperature so it's but if you go to an area where the temperature is high like you know dry or even rajasthan or the areas where the temperature is really high the best way to do it is you know if there are ice packs that are available you take a plastic cover keep an ice pack keep uh, insulin pen along with that it will maintain room temperature for more than uh, a day or even cold okay. water bottle keep it along with the cold water bottle uh-huh. so correct properly taking your drugs during travel is the best way to uh, avoid hyperglycemia that is high sugar complications during travel 
Hmm. Right, right. So now, doctor, uh, a lot of sweets these days come with uh, some kind of a sugar-free sweetness. So how so, uh, safe are they? You know, sweeteners which are sugar-free for general health of people. The data on sweetness, so sweetness is something that's relatively new to us. They are obtained from uh, the plants, uh, stevia. So there are they are also manufactured. So the data at present is that sweeteners uh, do not cause harm to humans. Although some some of the sweeteners have been found to be little harmful to mice, uh, but most of the sweeteners are very safe. So ideally, if you are not used to taking your coffee or tea plain, that is without sugar, uh, you can use sweetener. There's nothing wrong in using sweeteners. Uh, but I would say the best if you are a diabetic, you can avoid uh, processed sugar if possible. That that will be the best way forward. Sweetness occasionally is not. I believe uh, doctor's internet is getting stuck. Uh, uh, doctor, we will ask you in between. I think your internet got stuck, doctor. Can you please repeat what you said? Yes. So, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. your internet lost in between, doctor. We will request yeah. you to please uh, repeat uh, what you said about the sweetness. Yeah. You are able to hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you now, yes. Yeah. As to sweetener, at the present data on sweeteners is that most sweeteners are, do not cause any harm to us. So, uh, using sweeteners is not contraindicated. Okay. Uh, is not contraindicated. You can use, uh, uh, if you are not used to taking coffee or tea without sugar, it's best that you can, you know, you can always add a, a tablet of sweetener along with that. Uh, but uh, I would say, because this is a relatively new acid in, in moderation, so don't, uh, you know, don't use it too much. Uh, that would be the way forward. If you can right. actually take your coffee and tea without, uh, without sugar and sweetener, you know, that's the best way ahead. Uh, uh, is what I would say. But sweeteners are safe. The present problem is there's a lot of, uh, you know, uh, discussion on whether sweetness is going to cause cancer or sweetness is causing other problems. But uh, there is no data on sweetness causing any of these problems. Okay, okay. Uh, great. So, uh, Doctor, it's time now. I think uh, uh, we have, we have, we have want to thank you. I mean, it's been really, really helpful. Guys, uh, if you've got any questions around diabetes or if you'd like us to answer any, anything specific for you, uh, please do let us know. Uh, we cover different uh, topics every single uh, time on every Saturday. So if you've got a, separate, a specific concern in your mind regarding dental, skin care, uh, general health, uh, baby care or maternity care, we will try to take them up in our coming session. So please do let us know. Uh, once again, thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us today. And uh, we wish you a very, very happy weekend. And guys, uh, wish you a very happy weekend to you as well. Do take care of your health. Stay healthy. Uh, check out uh, Cureka.com for all your healthcare needs. Products are handpicked by a team of doctors. Let us know your questions in the WhatsApp platform on the Eureka.com uh, website and we have got a store for you in Indranagar, Bangalore. Do check it out if you're there in Bangalore. Visit your store and we have got some of the very, very specific imported uh, international brands which are only available at our store. So do check them out and let us know your feedback. Uh, thank you, Doctor. With that, I would like to take your uh, leave and we'll look forward to connecting with you again. Thank you. Thank you.